Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about coping with stress. So coping, coping with stress. Because most of the info so far in this playlist has been pretty terrible news. And I want to shift over to some more fun topics, like how do we start to alleviate some of the stress that's constantly pounding us down. And the first area that I, I want to talk about is perceived control. So perceived perceived control. And many studies have shown that a perceived lack of control is associated with higher rates of stress. So Dr. Robert Sapolsky showed this with baboons um, who, who have social hierarchy structures that are quite similar to humans. And, and based off blood samples and, and studying stress hormone levels, he determined that the, those primates at the bottom of the barrel socially experience experience much more stress than the ruling elite baboons. And then similarly, a, a human study called the White Hall study showed the exact same effect in humans based off relative rank in the workplace over in Britain. And so it makes good physiological sense based on the understanding that our body responds to perceived threats through through that choreographed stress response that we've been talking about, and that a lack of control is, is certainly a perceived threat. So it makes sense that low socioeconomic status and lack of control increased stress. And one suggestion um, made by Dr. Robert Sapolsky to respond to this is to look for areas of your life where you can take a little bit of that control back. So, so to be the king of your own castle. Um, and maybe this is captaining your, your work softball team or securing a leadership position in your community or even scheduling out events that stress you out so that you feel in control when it's time to complete them. You actually making the, the, the schedule. Um, but perceived control can help us cope with stress. And then the next big area is optimism. And Dr. Dr. Patch Adams was certainly an advocate of laughter as, a, as the best kind of medicine in that 1990s film. Um, but that advice is probably not trivial. And, and many studies have connected humor and optimism with decreased stress. And so it's probably much easier said than done, but nurturing an optimistic outlook can be a great way to cope with stress. So we've got perceived control and we've got optimism. And then the, the next one is through social support. Social Social support is the next coping mechanism for, for stress, and, and it's one of the best coping mechanisms of, of stress because deep connectedness allows us to confide those painful or, or difficult feelings, and that allows us to understand that we're not alone in many of those feelings, and this can contribute to our perception of control and our optimism. Also, supportive communities are associated with better eating and, and exercise and sleeping patterns. So some examples of social supports that have been verified by studies to positively benefit stress coping include marriage, um, uh, domesticated animals like puppy dogs and, and kitty cats, and, and close friendships. So social support, optimism, and, and perceived control are all great coping mechanisms for dealing with stress. But while all the coping mechanisms can help us experience less stress, um, sometimes those stressors are, are unavoidable and we simply need to manage them. So I also want to talk about managing stress. So managing stress and and when the stress is there how do we manage it and the first stress management tool that i want to talk about is exercise so exercise and and exercise gives us the ability to decrease our chance of cardiovascular disease because exercise is going to contribute to our increased cerebrovascular health with our our brain and our hearts and our blood vessels and it's going to increase neurogenesis it's going to help us grow new neurons and processes but uh, you can't just be a weakened warrior you need to exercise daily so so 20 to 30 minutes daily is suggested in order to get those cardiovascular effects that we want and also regular exercise especially for stress relief requires a good amount of planning so so you're gonna have to plan because we're gonna have to shove aside a lot of the stressors that we're combating just to make time for this exercise um, so we've got exercise and then we've also got meditation meditation we can put meditation in our stress management tool belt and this is going to help us lower our heart rate and our blood pressure and our cholesterol and it's kind of hard to uh, to have a symbol for meditation, but the best one that I could come up with is this this ohm symbol. Because when I think of meditation, I think of that that ohm sound, and, and this is the Hindu ohm 
own symbol. But of note, the literature is still out on the persistence of, of these effects related to meditation. And it's kind of obvious that the kind of people who choose to meditate are already responding to stress a bit differently. Um, but still, it has shown great results in combating the negative cardiovascular effects of stress. So we're going to put that in our tool belt. We've got meditation. And then we've also got religious beliefs and faith. It's actually a nightmare of political correctedness to, uh, to come up with a symbol for religious beliefs and faith. So I'm going to try to, to choose one that's maybe less obvious. I want to offend as, as few people as possible. We'll put the yin and the yang up there. And this might be correlated, this religious belief and faith aspect of, of stress management might be correlated with a, a generalized kind of healthier lifestyle because excessive alcohol and tobacco use are generally frowned upon by many of the, of the big world religions. And then another big part of uh, faith-based stress management are the social supports that are usually associated with these places of worship. But again, we're going to put this in our stress management tool belt. And then the last area that I want to talk about is cognitive flexibility. So cognitive, cognitive flexibility. So cognitive flexibility is going to give us the ability to take one step back and, and kind of reformulate the way that we're approaching the stress if it's not working, if the way we're approaching it's not working. So as an example of this, um, the serenity prayer um, is, is kind of this mantra used a lot in 12-step meetings. So it goes something like, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I can't change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so the benefit of perspective change is huge in our body's perception of stressors, of what is stressing us out and, and how we're responding with our stress reaction. So often the limiting reagent in this situation is the wisdom part. And so a good way to work on this area is through some outside help, maybe um, especially somebody that's professionally trained in, in psychological health care, like a counselor. Um, but cognitive flexibility is going to be put into our stress management tool belt. So we have um, four great areas that, that we can focus on stress management when those stressors are just there. Um, and we've got three areas up top with, with stress coping that will ho hopefully help us reduce some of the stress that's in our life.